The new V2 Twitter data API is really opening up new possibilities for what marketers, researchers, and developers can do with publicly available Twitter data. Especially if you're in academia, where you can now scrape up to 10 million tweets per month for free. And if you're too school for cool, you can still access 500,000 tweets per month for free. This is amazing! For students, you can now access up to 10 million historical tweets since 2006 per month. For everyone else, like us marketers and product folk, we can get 500,000 tweets within the past seven days per month, which I think is more than generous. Thank you, Twitter. And that's not all. The new API can also return fully hydrated related objects such as users who posted the tweets you were searching for as a separate collection in the same response. So you can get everything you need now from a single set of API requests. So let's talk a little more about what exactly is new here and what it means for us scraping public Twitter data. And just so we're clear, as of this video, the new API is in early access. However, they claim it's still production ready and ready for use at scale. So this basically means that we should be able to use these updated endpoints now, but should know that more functionality is on the way soon. The other nice thing they did was completely revamp the developer portal, which looks like they had an entire full UX team working on this, and it looks amazing. I can even see my current tweet scraping usage and quota for the current month. They also added more general use cases, like simply exploring the API, you can use during the application process for getting access. These used to be a lot more strict and requiring you to pick a very specific use case just to apply for access. And the authentication system is much easier now. Previously, you had to generate your bearer token manually on the command line using your API key in secret. But now you can generate a bearer token in the web app just by clicking a button and then saving this output in your password manager. One other thing to note is that I don't yet see a way for non-academic users to access historical tweets older than seven days, as any search for tweets older than seven days requires the academic use case. Now remember, this is still early access, so I imagine Twitter will eventually also allow at least the business product track to access the full archive search, since the current version 1.1 API allows us with the premium Twitter API. So I imagine that if you're not a student, you'll eventually still be able to use the historical archive as a business or premium track, assuming you're willing to pay Twitter a little bit of money, which is well deserved for this amazing API they give us. So let's go through a walkthrough on how to use the new search API endpoint V2, which now is a single endpoint that works with both the recent seven day tweet search everyone can use as well as the new full archive search that academic product track users can use. The only difference now is that you just change the URL from recent to all to access the full archive, which is a huge relief compared to the current API, which has two totally different APIs and endpoints, one for recent searches and one for historical searches. So let's do a demo on how to actually use this thing. They have a very helpful quick start guide I'm gonna walk through right now. You can follow the prerequisites here, but basically all you need is the bearer token that I went through earlier, and you can generate that from the developer dashboard with the push of a button. Once you get that bearer token, you are good to go. Now, they recommend using Postman to test this out, but I personally find Postman a little bit confusing, and I'm not really sure what to do here or where any of the inputs go. So I'm going to demonstrate instead using the Steve C data platform, which will allow me to not only make requests like in Postman, but also easily download the results into CSV files for bulk analysis. Disclaimer time. I happen to own the Steve C data platform and yes, it is a paid product, making this an extremely biased opinion that I have. You're free to use the platform if you don't want to tinker with parsing and making CSV files, the link is in the description, or you can do everything in this video with Postman or whatever other free tool of your choice. Next, we're going to authenticate our request, and we just paste in our bearer token where the Steve C platform asks us to. Next, we make a search query, so here I'll use their example. From Twitter dev will get us all the tweets within the past seven days from Twitter dev account. 
Step four, specify fields. So this is really what you need to know about with the new V2 API is that you now need to explicitly tell Twitter exactly which fields you want back. So if you skip this step, you'll get back a very skinny response of only the ID of the tweet and the basic text. So for example, they show us how to specify the fields we want back for the tweet when it was created. And there's this expansion field as well, which returns separate collections of related objects like the user or author here of who posted the tweet in this case. And lastly, we can declare which fields we want back from the expanded user object, e.g. the user's bio or description here. So I ran this, but had to change from Twitter dev to just from Twitter to get this to work. Since Twitter dev hasn't posted in the past seven days, I got an empty response. But here from Twitter, we can see all the parse data Stacey gave us as well as the raw response. And in the raw JSON from Twitter, we see that each tweet now has an author ID and they also return a separate collection of users with those IDs here. So we can look them up on our end accordingly. The authors are no longer stuffed inside of the tweet object, taking up a lot of repetitive space in the tweet collection like they were before in the previous API. So this is great news, especially for marketers who tend to care more about the people who posted with a particular hashtag they only want to analyze their profiles, follower account, bio, etc. That's now given to you as a separate collection you can take in instead of having to deduplicate and go through all the messy data in one big combined collection of tweets. So while this is a great demonstration, the amount of data we get back is a little bit slim. And in the real world, I know a lot of you want to get back as much data as possible. This is called hydrating the object so Twitter returns us as many possible fields. And there's some really interesting ones available in V2 now where you can look for like the click-through rate of links, for example, or other public information like impressions and clicks, etc. To get all the expansions back, like users, places, etc., we just visit this page in the documentation and then we enter all these values that are possible, separated by a comma into our API request. And we do the same thing for fields, but there are much more object types. We just have to go through all these objects and then copy paste the fields we want back separated by a comma. I already went ahead and documented all of the fields you can possibly get back here on the CZ data platform. So if you just want to get as much data back as possible, simply copy these sample values here and use them in your API requests and you'll get all the data back. For example, I ran the workflow version of this endpoint on the CC data platform to page through and get me all of the recent posts containing hashtag beer and all of the related data back as well, in addition to the raw tweet data with some of the new fields they provide like organic reach and click through, etc. And I also get back as a separate collection all of the full user data with info like their follower counts, bios, stats, and much more. And let's keep in mind, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I barely used up any of my quota and I can keep going all month up to 500,000 tweets. They don't seem to charge more of your quota, even if you request back all of the possible fields and expansions. So I hope you learned a little bit about what's coming in the new Twitter API and it's available now already. You can start scraping up to 10 million tweets a month if you're a student. Check out the link in the description to the CC data platform which is a good tool if you want to get a lot of data out as a CSV file to use it in your own analysis. Otherwise, you can just use it as a reference for the Twitter API and you can use whatever tool of choice you want to access it. So check out the links in the description and let me know in the comments if you get stuck or if you have any specific questions, I'll see if I'm able to help. Please like if you learn something, subscribe if you want to see more of me, and as always, stay healthy and stay data-driven.